Hello, everyone. If you are just joining us, welcome to the Radical Exchange Annual Conference. Our next session will be the ETH Turn Hackathon, a quadratic voting story. I'd like to welcome Fanny to the stage to begin our session. Hi, everybody. Um, so we are actually at hour 42 of uh, the 40 hours uh, conference. So uh, we are getting uh, to towards the end. Uh, so I, my name is Fanny Lakubai. I am the head of communication for Radical Exchange. Uh, but during the next hour, I'm actually not going to be. I'm going to wear my other hat. I don't actually have a hat, but um, I'm uh, also the co-organizer of uh, Easterin, uh, which uh, was a um, sorry local impact and ESG focused uh, hackathon, which we organized uh, last April. Um, so I'm going to introduce briefly um, the panelists, and uh, and then we'll dive uh, right in. So we have Matteo uh, Tambusi with us, uh, also co-organizer of Easterin. Um, he's also a blockchain investor uh, based in Turin and former life peer. He now focuses on urban farming and audio distribution projects. Uh, we have Giovanni Di Loro, uh, who is uh, was our technical lead uh, for Easterin uh, and is also a software developer in blockchain and finance and the chapter lead for Radical Exchange Italy. Um, and uh, last but not least, we have Victor Schent, uh, who is co-founder of Diora Earth. Uh, and strategy and business lead for LeapDAO. So the story, it sounds all a little random and why are we here and like, why do you, should you listen to us? Um, but we actually all met at a blockchain hackathon last year, uh, last summer uh, at East Berlin, uh, and then reconnected at the Radical Exchange Conference uh, that happened in November, 2019 in Berlin, uh, which was a smaller conference than this one, but it was in person, so actually met in person. And um, this is when we started collaborating on, um, on this hackathon. And Matteo will tell you a bit more later why we focused on local impact and uh, ESG. And the uh, hackathon for people who are not familiar with uh, these types of events are uh, pretty much like this conference, like 48 hour or like three day long day and night um, event for uh, developers. This one was actually focused on blockchain developers who use the Ethereum uh, blockchain. That's why it was called Easter um, So, but we are at the Radical Exchange uh, conference. So we uh, do want to start uh, with uh, the link uh, that ties us, uh, that ties the hackathon uh, to Radical Exchange. And um, and this is quadratic voting uh, that we used and that we will go in detail on how we used it. So a consistent point uh, during this uh, conference uh, was the fact that we need more storytelling to spread the word uh, about mechanism designs uh, that are complicated, like quadratic voting, and explain that uh, to more people. Um, so let me tell you a little story. Um, this is a story of little quadratic voting who plan to go on a nice trip to Italy uh, to attend the blockchain hackathon and could not because a worldwide pandemic happened. So it's not, however, a novel like the one that uh, Simon de la Rouvia just uh, presented before this talk, but sometimes reality really, um, you know, goes beyond fiction. And I think Easterin, uh, did not fall short of that because we planned a local hackathon uh, in person um, and um, the COVID-19 pandemic happened, so everything had to change. But challenging times call for innovation and creative solutions. And um, we rose up to the challenge, I think. And, um, and we will really, um, you know, like we had to switch from local to online. Uh, we had to really be... Um, innovative in the way we, um, you know, planned all the aspects of the hackathon. Um, so we actually partnered with Diora Earth uh, for one of these aspects, and this was the voting, uh, because at the, at the end of a hackathon, um, uh, developers uh, were in team, um, uh, submit projects, um, and uh, judges uh, vote for the winning uh, team of the hackathon, who wins the prize, and um, um, so it's pretty much like we kept the same uh, format, but uh, brought it online. So um, I personally think it's an important use case for quadratic voting uh, that has a bright future, but 
you know, I'm biased. Uh, so I will now leave the floor um, to um, people who can explain a bit more uh, the technical aspect of uh, quadratic voting. And um, I think Victor, that's uh, uh, your turn. So go ahead. Yes, let's start. Good morning uh, from Berlin. Um, we keep the short here with the what is quadratic voting, uh, because I guess the main rough outline of this concept is uh, known to listeners. Um, we are more interested in the in our use case and how we uh, bridged uh, certain parts of the setup. Um, yeah, just to just to give an idea. So when asked, most most people they don't really care about the outcome of a decision. Um, when we look at the one person one vote concept. So people look for the um, solution which is uh, not harming them the most. Yeah. So we checked um, to equip our um, users or our voters with a voice credit. So they purchase the votes instead of uh, just giving them out for, for their one uh, voice. Uh, so that means uh, if we have four credits uh, that buys two votes, 100 credits buys 10 votes. That should be uh, known for the moment. Um, very important for us and for this uh, use case here is that this voting mechanism yeah, can show the not only the direction, but also the magnitude of the opinion of the people. Yeah. And um, credit voting actually strives for a balance for, um, in which people give ground on the issues they care less about. So they have a stronger voice on the things they actually care about. So let's see how this turns out for our um, hackathon here. Right. Um, Giovanni, that's yours, correct? Uh, yes. Hi, uh, everybody from Italy. I'm Giovanni, introduced by Fanny, and uh, I did the uh, exchange, and I'd like to go a little uh, in depth about why quadratic voting uh, is, uh, can help us to solve some of the, the basic problems in economics and design theory. Uh, let's say that quadratic uh, voting, uh, although an easy concept to grasp, uh, it solves a problem that we could uh, state as uh, the following. Uh, how can we keep a marginal cost uh, uh, that, that is growing constantly? Uh, first of all, let's define uh, the marginal cost as uh, the difference in uh, total cost uh, to increase uh, the purchased goods by one unit. Uh, a question uh, that arises is uh, why do we actually need the constantly growing marginal cost in the first place? Uh, this acts uh, because this uh, could act as an optimal solution uh, to the tyranny of uh, the riches. Um, uh, uh, to the tyranny of the riches uh, into the uh, allocation of scarce goods. Um, this, uh, let's say, that uh, try to solve, uh, um, uh, to avoid uh, the, uh, the using of uh, regulators and uh, regulatory policies um, in, uh, in place of, um, but preferring economic uh, mechanism design. For example, let's assume that uh, there is a scarcity in bread. And uh, people just need some bread to, to survive. Uh, we do not want that the rich get all the bread, uh, but instead of imposing uh, political restrictions, uh, we use a mechanism design and uh, quadratic pricing, uh, as it's the case for quadratic voting, as uh, we are going to see in an example, to balance the system. Uh, and say, anytime that we increase a unit of good uh, to be bought, uh, the marginal cost increases by constant factor. Uh, uh, and we are going to see it into the next example. So uh, let's say that we want to transpose uh, this, uh, that saying, uh, instead of using these uh, regulatory policies, we want to use uh, an economic uh, mechanism to solve this issue. Uh, transpose the reasoning uh, done for the riches in, economy, in uh, an economy to this in a hackathon. And let's equate the original votes to scarce goods. What we get uh, is all the benefits that uh, we are discussing here. Uh, so judges uh, are not careful in spending their votes. But on the other end, uh, in our hackathon, we also opened uh, the voting process to participants. And uh, this introduces uh, um, an economic mechanism uh, that allows them to express um, uh, their preferences uh, 
uh, according to the perceived utility of uh, the projects that were being evaluated. Uh, um, I like to go next with um, with two panels this time and to the, uh, to the next example of uh, uh, assuming uh, a constant price in uh, in the votes. Um, do, do we have problem with the connection? Because it's like um, okay, you're uh, breaking up a little sorry, bit, but I'm, it's uh, it's uh, we we understand mostly. <laughs> no. I, Okay, sorry. No, the problem is that I'm hosting on my cell phone. Okay, uh, I suppose the reasoning uh, done for the reach on, uh, and the last week that was going through the first examples uh, where what we are doing is uh, we are uh, this introduces uh, 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 just for the matter of uh, our example. Uh, let's assume that uh, uh, the marginal gain that is a uh, how much do I get from one single vote in terms of benefit is constant and assume it to be 10 for, um, for example sake. The stack that we have in place as an agent is a hundred uh, value, so let's say hundred euros to spend on, on the vote. Uh, we, we ask ourselves, uh, if an agent uh, pays for any single vote uh, seven euros, how, how many votes will the agent uh, buy? Uh, assuming that uh, uh, buying one vote you pay seven and buying two you pay 14 because there is no change in the price of the vote, the optimal uh, number of votes to buy uh, by the agent is 98, which is the, the agent will buy 14 votes. Uh, but uh, it is clear that this mechanism uh, uh, translates in uh, more money, more votes. Why? Because if another agent with 60 uh, euros to spend, uh, and uh, assuming the same marginal gain for this agent, uh, that is uh, one vote, you gain a benefit of 10, uh, how much vote uh, is this agent going to buy? Is going to buy eight votes uh, and spend 56 euros. Uh, and we are seeing uh, we are seeing uh, a difference of six votes between a richer player and a poorer player. Um, could we bring some justice into the game uh, uh, without using uh, 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 without asking for a regulator to come in place? And uh, the next example that we see in the next slide is uh, the implementation of quadratic voting. I'd like to just go fast on how uh, uh, yeah, it works on uh, the margin of uh, how much votes. Uh, as Victor said, uh, the price that we pay for, uh, for the votes is, uh, is quadratic. Uh, it means that uh, if you want to have X votes, you have to pay X squared, uh, X squared of uh, the value. Uh, so if I want to have one, uh, one vote, uh, I would like to, sp uh, the agent will spend one euro. Assume here that we are seeing uh, yes, uh, the agent we are discussing about is the agent that had uh, 100 euros to spend. And um, could we bring some justice into the game going through uh, the decision made by the agent? That is uh, the first thing that he does is um, he tries to, uh, 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 without asking for a regulator to come uh, ask uh, himself, how much do I spend to buy one vote? The first vote that they won, so my marginal cost is one. My marginal cost is less than my marginal gain, so for me it's convenient to buy the vote. So the second reason uh, that is when uh, the agent uh, asks him that is uh, implementation of uh, I would, uh, you, you will see that uh, to do that you will spend. Uh, could we bring some uh, uh, here? And the uh, slide is uh, you can have uh, X votes, you have to pay X squared, uh, X squared of uh, the vote. I would like to, uh, for adding one unit of wood. And it is history. Assume here that uh, the agent we are talking about is the agent that had uh, and, and, uh, a marginal cost. Um, we are going to uh, the decision really that when the marginal cost is greater than the marginal gain, this will uh, be a suggestion to the agent that is not more, is no more is uh, is no longer convenient for him to buy. His, um, he tries to uh, ask uh, how much we spend to buy one vote. First of all, cost is one uh, five votes when the marginal cost is nine. Uh, as we can see from uh, this example, uh, the marginal cost is growing uh, constantly by um, a constant factor. Uh, this constant factor is two. It is nothing more than uh, the first derivative of the pricing, the, uh, the coefficient of the, the first derivative of the, the, the pricing function. So uh, in this case, uh, 
the, the, the richer agent, uh, the one that uh, had 100 euros to spend on uh, the votes, uh, is going to buy five votes uh, instead of the 14 uh, votes in the previous example. But what will do an agent with 60 euros? You will see that uh, on the other side. An agent of six euros uh, uh, will uh, repeat the same uh, reasoning and will stop as well at five votes. So in this way, we have seen that both the agents have the same voting power, and we have uh, brought a uh, still less than 10 for a regulator to buy vote. So, in, but just uh, by introducing uh, a mechanism design uh, game, uh, this was uh, so we. Um, uh, I think you're cutting off a little bit. Victor, do you want to take over? Um, yes, I can just we, uh, jump in here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you. Giovanni, for the moment. Um, let's, let's look at the actual parts we have used for our setup. Um, and uh, what we have utilized uh, within our reach to make sure that this um, vote and the whole hackathon is actually working out. Um, just to give a little primer here again with the tech uh, talk, uh, this blockchain technology we have used, um, all buzzwords as, as, aside, yeah, but especially Ethereum is a mature uh, blockchain which can be utilized for um, for experience in self-governance. So and this is actually what we do here. Um, we try to govern our ourselves as sufficient and as transparent as possible. So I would say um, blockchains in this matter are uh, distributed and efficient. Um, yeah, so any sufficiently large group can choose a mechanism to yeah, wholly or partially govern their, their life in the cloud actually. Yeah, so these networks, these uh, span across the globe, time and time zones, cultures. So it means truly everyone is involved in this uh, process if they want to. And what we try to do here is, um, yeah, just like others create a, a DAO to govern themselves. We have like set up a little app um, just, yeah. And by combining different projects who are already out there in the Ethereum ecosystem, we try to, yeah, connecting like building blocks like little Lego blocks and build something be beautiful and new out of, out of that. Yeah. Um, yeah, before we jump into a little more, um, uh, yeah, or let's say detailed, it's just the list of the parts. And if someone is brave enough to combine them by themselves, feel free. <laughs> yeah. So just, just to be sure that everyone gets the scope of this, um, more iterations and analysis is necessary to determine the frameworks in which QV is really nice to have and which it has a truly big impact. So if we can skip the slide, I will just uh, check here. So um, yeah, the Ethereum infrastructure we have utilized is if you work with tokens and with credits, you need a wallet. So we use the burner wallet by Austin Griffith. Um, we have utilized the um, Leap Plasma chain from LeapDAO. Um, yeah, more like working like a test net. So like a private blockchain in this sense, but still all results and all um, votes verified by the Ethereum main chain. We have uh, utilized um, yeah, two tokens and three smart contracts. And uh, especially for, for the hackathon, we have built the voice credit faucet. So that's uh, built by Lito, but um, yeah, I like to mention maybe Keno and uh, the other guys from the Lito team. Um, really stepped up this application just by making it possible to attend by the uh, faucet. And of course, the NFT just to um, have the identity at least scratched on so that we can say we tried with the NFT, but we will get there uh, later in the panel talking about the opportunities. So let's have a little look at the sketch here um, because we have like two options for this, for this flow. Yeah, we have the option NFT. Um, if you look at the uh, top left, 
This was our option for the hackathon. So it means uh, the user approaches the deposit with the ETU NFT and gets the uh, voice credits paid out actually. So, and um, the other op option would be to have a QR code which is scanned by the user. So this is for analog use cases, a very good thing. So you just spread out these paper wallets to the people you know or which you have been in contact anyway or you send them by mail or whatever, and they scan it, the wallet is set up, and the people are ready to vote, yeah? Um, as you can see, the credits are uh, transferred from the wallet to the voting booth, and there is the magic happening, actually, yeah? So um, the blockchain magic is happening uh, at the balance card, so we hashed together all the votes. As you can see, there was one yes vote and three yes votes, so they get together and then they will be submitted all together in, in the end to the Ethereum mainnet. Um, yeah, I guess the next one would be the results, if I'm not mistaken. So let me just pick out two or three little highlights here. Um, unfortunately, yeah, we could have sorted it a bit more beautiful, but if you look at the four projects we have, like Hackalong, Maza Turin slash account slash and Biddle, they all have very tight uh, vote dis distribution around the 40, 41, 42, um, but very different um, amounts of voice credits have been spent. So um, we can of course share the results or we have shared them many times. So um, people feel, feel free to make your own uh, research with our results. But um, just to have a little look, for example, it was the Maza, Maza Turin with 42 vo votes have received 164 voice credits in comparison to the slash account slash, which received 40 votes, but in total 172 voice credits even. So we see that even if the votes are higher, different spendings of the voice credits are possible. So um, yeah, minorities are here and they have a voice. So. We should listen and see uh, what kind of contributions they have maybe in the next time. So, um, yeah, from the results, we step over to the actual yeah little headline here. So we had this first integration of the ERC twenty as uh, seven twenty one. Sorry, the NFT. So our first draft of the identity solution for us. But as you can still see, we have so many. No, 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 not so many, but some open problems still to tackle. Yeah, it would be easy if there would be nothing left to uh, iterate on. But um, yeah, this this little thing we can we can write on our uh, yeah on our CV now. We did the first integration of ERC uh, seven twenty one plus on chain quadratic voting secured by the Ethereum mainnet. So I guess with all these iterations and all these experiments building around what is there, what is open source and what can we utilize uh, within our own networks. Um, I feel a bit proud that we did uh, a good return on this and um, yeah, feeling happy to tackle these open problems with you at some other point of this quadratic. You don't voting. have to be that humble. A little <laughs> bit proud. No, you should be very proud. <laughs> this was a great achievement. Cool. Yeah, how do we go, go on from here, Matteo? Um, so can... now... Yeah, um, now yeah, I think cool. uh, we wanted to give you a bit more uh, background on uh, on the hackathon in, in general. And uh, uh, yeah, go ahead, Matteo. Right. So, yeah, I met Fanny at it, 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 it Berlin's by last August. And it's then that we basically started the idea to have a more of a, a theme focused hackathon, also a bit more. Um, aware, uh, environmental aware and socially aware hackathon, although we are also aware that core developers don't see these kind of implementations in, in a too good light. They want to focus on the, on the core features of Ethereum, but we, we thought that this could be still the case to come up with MVPs that could maybe drive also the, the, some, some philosophical thinking in the core implementation. So if Berlin Zwei was basically the start with me and Fanny started pitching this hackathon and I proposed Turin, my city, my hometown in Northern Italy as the possible hosting place because 
it's a very innovative city. We have high tech. The MP3 was invented here. And at the same time, we are the home, uh, the, the, we have the headquarters of the slow food movement. So we have this double identity of sustain, sustainability towards landscape, um, countryside food, zero kilometers supply, et cetera, and high tech. So I want to have it here, basically. Uh, we started developing the idea and there was Radical Exchange Conference in Berlin in November um, last year that gave us a boost in terms of uh, networking, especially with, uh, with the guys from, from Diora who are now family, I would have to say. And um, then there were other occasions where we pitched the hackathon to some governmental agencies in, during the Digital Italy Summit and at Davos, where I personally uh, attended to, to, to pitch this, this kind of new, um, new, new idea of, of a hackathon on local, uh, on local uh, impact. Then the COVID-19 lockdown started and we basically had to, uh, like many, we had to face the, the possibility of, of just postponing to next year, et cetera. So we, we, we saw many collateral hackathons, other hackathons like if Lisbon, if Lagos and other, that they had like logistical problems. And this was the case for us not to give up and start like condensing our, our network and migrating our sponsors from our own business model into something that could actually make the hackathon happen. So we decided to go for virtual and we, we basically involved um, interspace.chat, which is an awesome reality for um, open source conferencing and it's managed by Parallel um, Austria, Parallel Polis who did a wonderful job in managing the technical side of the conference we had. We partnered with the University of Turin and the Polytechnic University of Turin, and of course with Radical Exchange, the Legal Hackers, the Turin um, section that helped us giving like the, the, the local legal framework to all the hacks that were presented. So also that we had like a lo local legal framework, like sort of a gateway to kind of validate the ideas on the local um, scenario. And of course, the Ethereum Foundation that helped us with some funding for the prizes. Um, this is a, a bit of the of the visual uh, rendition of what we had in mind. It's, it's a sort of function. We wanted to have like the Ethereum community as the multiplicator for the, uh, I'm sorry if I put, if I dare to put the radical exchange community within the SDG um, goals, but that's sort of how I try to uh, match the identities. So basically the, the, the tech part trying to exponentially uh, grow this concept of SDG applied to a local um, scope, to a local environment. So in this second part of this sort of visually identifiable function. I wanted to give the SDG a more of a, of a understandable and tangible um, um, realm. The SDG uh, which are expressed, which were expressed by the UN in 2015, they do suffer a lot of vagueness and this is what everyone is a bit com complaining about, that they are not very specific. So our focus was trying to be, to specify them down to the local use case using a very, very specific technology. This is also what we meant by local impact of SDG, meaning that every, every local reality, whether it's a PA or it's a, it's a community, they do have their own agenda. They do have their own political agenda. So for example, in Turin, we would not place the SDG life 
underwater, which is one of the SDGs, is called life underwater. Uh, we would not place that SDG as one of our priority. We would place more likely sustainable cities because of our levels of PM10 and PM2.5 uh, um, cars, emissions, etc. The same would do Milan because they share the same you know, pollution rates. And the same, for example, would do Stuttgart because it's a city which dips down in a valley. And uh, although it's uh, Germany is usually a bit more of um, has a bit more of a cleaner air, Stuttgart in particular has very very high percentages of PM10 and PM2.5. So I, this is just um, a visual way to say these SDGs should be in in our opinion clustered into priorities that can match on that can match um, agendas between cities and local administrations. Um, again, what, uh, what we try to, I'm sorry for the bells, I, I, try, I came to my parents' house because they have better connection and it's, it's, in, it's in the countryside, you have church bells. <laughs> we can't hear them, you but we would like to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, again, our scope for this hackathon was basically to trying to identify the in-between uh, factor between these three communities, which are represented by the Ethereum communities, the DEP community, meaning the radical exchange community, and more of a local um, driven community, meaning uh, local initiatives, Green Turin, again, urban farms, um, local university projects and uh, public administration projects. This is the, the green triangle is the thing that we try to identify and we try to uh, work and build on. So somehow we call these the hollows kind of stealing from a project that was submitted to his Turin as well, a very, very nice project. Uh, again, uh, by identifying these, these hollows, basically we can cr create more resonant clusters. And um, yeah, our idea was basically to adopt uh, the, the, the idea behind radical markets and crypto to create a link between those who call themselves digital nomads and try to connect them with the dwellers who are usually a bit secondary in the technological adoption. Um, why is, is local implementation important? Because local implementation, like local test lab and local impact provide, provide indeed test labs with um, offline social bonds, offline communities that have higher levels of trust. So you can, of course, um, delegate some of the trustless um, claims of the Ethereum network to, to, pers to, um, to interpersonal bonds that are already strong. So this is very important. Uh, it's important because you can troubleshoot with the local PA, which is, Local PAs are getting uh, the COVID also, the, the quarantine show that local PAs are taking on more responsibilities and slowly becoming more important in the, in the, even in the international pol uh, political spectrum. This is very important for Italy because Italy's best political expression historically wasn't the nation, wasn't the republic, it, it was the communes, although we were in the 1400, sorry, um, yeah, 1400s. But this is something that sort of we are um, aiming about at more of a locally responsible administration that can be a bit more flexible with local projects in terms of um, giving, uh, adopting blockchain and, and new way of voting, new way of funding by matching directly and by maybe giving vouchers in terms of pay off, pay, pay back. And again, one of the benefits from, from local impact is that you can engage neighborhood economies and circular economies, which 
can provide tangible payoffs to maybe crypto, for example. Uh, something that we try to also push for is the um, development of an idea of DeFi, which stands for decentralized finance, which has more of a, a local impact again. So we try to create this sort of micro DeFi or my DeFi. So the possibility of local stakeholders to stake on to um, local nodes or local um, clusters of production, whether it's physical production, digital production, or content production, meaning uh, collectives, art, uh, social, etc. I think this goes to Fanny now. Yeah, this is me. Thanks for um, the background um, and. Uh, um, yeah, so we, I wanted to go back a little bit to um, now to like what happened when COVID-19 uh, uh, happened. Uh, so after freaking out, uh, we said, okay, we can uh, make it happen. And I think that would be, you know, we thought that uh, making it happen would also give a message that like um, not you know, if you have the opportunity, like there's a silver lining that like you have to, um, you know, try uh, to, to do it. And it's not easy when you have a local event, uh, the last place you want it to be is online, right? Because online you think, oh, great, global, I can reach out people in like Asia, Europe, the US. Uh, and this is really not what we aim for. Uh, so, um, as Victor showed you uh, on his slide with the Ethereum community, uh, the, this hackathon was really a collaboration. I mean, we're not, we did not want to develop anything or uh, create something new, like it was not the goal. The goal was to uh, get people together uh, to, uh, to, to do something. And, um, and why do you get people to do that when they're online and, you know, people's attention is very hard to get. Um, so we decided actually that there were going to be two main tracks. There's going to be like one development track where all uh, the hackers would meet and, uh, and develop and work uh, on their project. And a second track, uh, which would be the conference, which I will talk uh, about after. Um, so we used a tool called Discord, which is already a chat like Slack uh, used by uh, a lot of uh, developers. And, uh, you know, we tweaked it a little, make it like uh, hierarchy wise, like working for our purpose. But um, at the end of the day, it was really like the people who made it work. Like we had uh, around 90 hackers uh, there logged in, not all the time, obviously, like it's not like you can just for them to um, to be there, but but really working, like really communicating and working and, um, and with us as well, like, you know, reaching out to them. Um, the interesting thing was that we also had a lot of mentors and sometimes it's easier to approach people uh, online, you know, than like, at physical events, you go and you're like, oh, well, there's like a VIP room and um, these people are talking to each other, blah, blah. So, um, so there were a lot of communication, mentoring, um, and new people to Ethereum were asking questions, like, um, and simply, like, nothing has to be, like, complicated, really, like, for something to happen. Um, uh, Giovanni's, like, made uh, um, a way for people to their work, um, you know, nothing, they did not have to have access to anything um, complicated um, so that they could participate even if they did not have uh, fancy technological tools. So that was the first track. If you go to the next one uh, for the conference, um, same thing. We did not have the budget to use um, a, a fancy, um, you know, conference platform uh, or just using Zoom was a little weird. Also very centralized for a decentralized community. So uh, we're very lucky to, again, uh, partner with uh, Interspace, uh, who actually provided uh, a lot of um, blockchain uh, conferences with a virtual environment uh, to host uh, conferences during the pandemic. And um, they developed an amazing interface, which we did not take a screenshot of. So I'm so sorry, like you're seeing this little bubbles. It was so nice. Um, and, and this is where like, it was a simple integration with an open, open source uh, Zoom called Jitsi. 
and uh, and we had two tracks like you know for a radical exchange conference and two days not continuous i think um but it was uh over 30 hours of uh of content and people from the community uh the ethereum community um the uh, esg community the turin uh, community uh joining and exchanging um uh information and we even had a crypto art exhibition uh in um the 3d uh world called the crypto voxel and uh if you go to the next slide yes that was like our little um uh, they're still available uh on uh, on on youtube so uh feel free to have a look at them um you can go i was just proud of my slide actually <laughs> so um and these are for some of the of the people who uh, uh who were involved in the talks um so ethereum italia obviously with uh, Matteo mentioned a uh, legal hacker, uh, Torino and the university. Uh, DAP Hero is a, a tool, uh, I mean, I'm not going to go in details, they're like just amazing tools. Uh, the person at the bottom is Simona Pop, who is like a, a big advocate of um, growing the community of Ethereum outside of uh, just a blockchain. So this, is, this was very, um, you know, high level quality um, uh, content, which we wanted to bring to um, to a more local city and not just to the Paris and New York and, and uh, of this world. Um, and then next slide. Uh, so yeah, and we had uh, nine um, um, hacks that were submitted. Uh, I'm only talking about the main uh, track, uh, which was about local impact and ESG. We also had bounties uh, from uh, various companies, including DRR Earth. Um, and uh, we had three winners. Uh, that were um, uh, voted, that were um, identified with quadratic voting that uh, Victor and Giovanni explained. And um, the winning project uh, was actually won by a woman. Yay, go us. Um, and, but talk aside, it was an amazing project because she, it really represented what we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to bring new people to a theorem. So uh, Bianca is, um, um, she's a biologist, right? Matteo? She, she's a neuro, neurobiologist. Neurobiologist, yeah. Neurobiologist uh, who actually had no idea about Ethereum or blockchain. Neuroscientist. Let's call neuroscientist. it neuroscientist and, okay. and give it like that. <laughs> She will correct me after watching this talk. Um, and, um, and she partnered, actually, she found a, a developer uh, during the hackathon on Discord <coughs> to partner and make this project ha happen. And the project was about like a peer-to-peer uh, review, anonymous review of scientific paper. Um, and she is um, continuing it. I mean, this is a, a, a going project. They studied a Gitcoin grant. Uh, we had uh, Kevin from Gitcoin yesterday uh, talking about the grants. So um, the second place was a urban uh, farm uh, project uh, in uh, Italy, uh, also using decentralized uh, census to uh, gather information and and help um, local uh, farming communities uh, communicate and uh, make a more sustainable living. And then the third place uh, was uh, it's a little um, little I, not joke, but it's a little um, clin d'oeil we say in French uh, to uh, to Glen. So it's um, it's wild cards. Uh, they were here yesterday as well uh, on uh, radical exchange. Uh, and they are using um, quadratic voting uh, to and cost actually as well to um, um, to protect uh, endangered species. Uh, and uh, actually, they're using more yeah, not quadratic voting, but just cost. Um, uh, similarly, like it's a project that iterated on Simon de la Rouvière's uh, project called the artworks that is always uh, on sale that he presented last year. Uh, at Radical Exchange and Wildcards uh, collaborated with him to uh, make this project happen. Um, yeah, so it was quite a success. And now I want to leave some time for us to uh, uh, all uh, pitch in and, uh, and tell you like a little bit what's next and what opportunities we identified. Uh, so I think, Matteo, if you want to start with a bit more general. Yeah, yeah. so um, the, the, first, the first opportunities that we identified was by, by running this hackathon virtually also is that this is a model that can be replicated very easily and lightweight somehow. 
and um, it can also be um, a mix of virtual and uh, and physical. It, do it doesn't have to be full physical with all its related costs, which which usually are very very high. Neither fully digital with this kind of downturn of not being completely social and not being able to interact on a more important level. So we can also think about um, <clears throat> hybrid hackathons that can happen on a, with a local hub and but also work globally and virtually. So this is something that me and Fanny are, are thinking about right now, like starting it local and uh, covering communal um, uh, happenings next year in Italy. I guess if Bologna could be one use case and maybe if Florence, because there's, there are some few strong communities down there and it's nice to tackle their own needs as well as communities. Um, also, we realized that including pre people from other academic environments uh, doesn't necessarily mean restricting core oriented visions but can create those bridges that can offer a diversion to core overthinking when developers are, are, are always like focusing on, on core development. Sometimes they could do, um, they could help a bit of um, MVP towards some specific other um, external academic environment that could serve, serve them in, in maybe come up, coming up with something else. Matteo, I'm, uh, I'm just going to cut you because we have yeah. uh, uh, not too much time left. I just want to really hear from uh, Victor uh, and Go Giovanni on, on. Uh, on uh, really the opportunities and, and maybe you can include also what's next uh, on, on that uh, for you. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Giovanni? Hi. Uh, yes. F first of all, sorry if I had some uh, troubles with connection. Uh, one lesson that I learned is uh, not being a digital nomad in Italy. It's the worst thing to do especially if you trust your career for the phone connection. But um, I wanted to stress a point that funny you had, that is um, something that I was very skeptical at the beginning, that was about the team formation that we were able to decentralize. Uh, and also the, the, the winner of the hackathon was a team uh, that all was um, completely built during the, the team forming process. And uh, having participants like um, that this was uh, was not going to happen because the team formation is something that happens very locally. Like you have to be uh, physically connected with the guy you are teaming with. And uh, the fact that they already they also won the hackathon was for me a very huge surprise. And uh, with this, we were able to, um, uh, let's say, to eat all the points that we wanted uh, to reach with our hackathon. We were able to shift it from a physical hackathon to a completely virtual hackathon. And I think it was for me a huge surprise. And I'm very proud uh, like uh, it went like this. Thank you. Victor, um, what, uh, what about you? Um... I'm very interested for the future applications, um, just to try out the negative voting, <laughs> just to have more frenzy in the in the result pages because they are a mess already. So we can uh, scale this one more time and see many more little iter iterations of these micro governance um, workflows we are building here. Um, because I really have the feeling we have the te technology at hand. We just have to make the right steps to see uh, what kind of power we can unleash for ourselves. And I guess with this uh, virtual hackathon, we really um, did something new. And when I tried to explain to friends, local friends of me, what I'm doing here with, with you guys, it was very hard to build like a, a real life application just to give them an example of what we are doing here. So with the video connections and voting and what so not. But then you see with the results and with the winner of the hackathon that there was a real specific um, use case, which was, yeah, in the end chosen 
by the hackers and not by a fixed ju jury. So, and this is what I see. Yeah, show Thank me. Show me something similar. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true that we haven't uh, said that, but everybody could vote. Uh, it was not just, uh, uh, you know, five judges uh, selected. So um, I just want to finish um, uh, by thanking all of you to uh, to be here and tell us uh, this story. And uh, and and I think Glenn, during his keynote um, earlier, I don't know if it's today or yesterday, and a few hours ago, um, said that really radical exchange should be a platform of exchange and communications between different communities. And, and I really believe uh, Easterin is a good example. And, and, and this is why we wanted to share uh, this story with uh, all of uh, you who are attending today. And, uh, and I hope you enjoyed it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you all.